OK, so our first lecture topic will be uh, environmental pollution. Uh, before that, this course is concerned with uh, two things. Yeah? Uh, first is environment. And the second part is uh, how we apply biotechnology to uh, solve the environmental problems or issues yeah, around us. So, um, so if we talk about environment, it can be just like without biotech, we can just see environment as it is. But uh, as biotechnologies, yeah, uh, you have learned a lot of uh, about what are biotech, yeah, what is uh, the applications of biotech in many fields, yeah, what are the potential of biological uh, systems like microorganisms. Uh, so how are we going to apply it? Yeah? How are we going to solve the environmental problems? So that is uh, what this course is all about. Okay, so in this first topic, we're going to look at uh, environmental pollution, and the second part will be on how we're going to uh, how we're going to uh, overcome or maybe what are the roles of biotech in um, reducing or in overcoming the environmental pollution. Right, so this is the outline of this lecture. Uh, first, we're going to have a look at what is pollution, what are the forms of environmental pollution, effects of pollution, uh, and then uh, the control and prevention of pollution. Right, and then uh, in the second and the third part, we're going to focus on the two major types of pollution, which are air pollution and water pollution. Okay, uh, so those are the two main uh, pollutions that we're going to discuss in detail. Right, so under the air pollution, we're going to see what is what are air pollutants, sources of air pollution, measurement of air quality, and at the end, what are the roles of biotech in reducing the air pollution? And for the water pollution. Uh, some backgrounds of water pollution, the major water pollutants, pathogens in water pollution, yeah, source points of water pollution, uh, measurement of water pollution, and at the end, uh, what are the roles of biotechnology in reducing the water pollution? Okay. All right, let's have a look at what is pollution in general. Pollution, by definition, is uh, disposal of contaminants. Uh, contaminants is something that is not um, something that is not good. Yeah, something that can cause side effects that can uh, that can be hazardous not to just environment but also to humans or to the organisms, living things like animals, plants. Yeah. So basically, is the disposal of contaminants into the natural environment that cause adverse change. Yeah? Uh, it can be in any form of chemical or physical change, addition of substances or dis uh, disturbances. Yeah? Right, so when we talk about pollution, the, the things that cause or create the pollution is called polluted. Yeah? Polluted is the waste material that pollutes air, that pollutes the environment in general, air, water, uh, soil. Yeah? can be either foreign or naturally occurring contaminants. So foreign, it can be from the man-made activities, from, uh, for example, vehicles, uh, from the factories, that is like uh, something that we introduce, the human introduced to the environment. Uh, naturally occurring contaminants, it can be from natural disaster, like uh, hurricanes, like uh, earthquake. So those are naturally occurring contaminants. Um, so what are forms of environmental pollution? There are many types of uh, forms of pollution. There are air pollution, noise pollution, water pollution, uh, littering, yeah? uh, air pollution. Uh, what uh, the, the contributors to air pollution are carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, yeah? uh, CFC, fluorofluorocarbons. Uh, nitrogen oxides, uh, and these are mostly produced by industry and motor vehicles. So it's a man-made uh, contaminant. Uh, littering, the criminal throwing of inappropriate man-made objects unremoved onto public and private properties. Okay, or something like um, the waste that is not supposed to go to landfills. Yeah, the waste that can be recycled. So. Uh, something that is not at the right place. 
it can cause pollution. Eh? If you dump, uh, for example, paper, paper can be recycled. But if you dump it at the landfill, uh, what happened? It can cause, it can uh, trigger the emission of the greenhouse gases. It can cause the climate change. So those kind of uh, effects eh, from, uh, it's not just littering, but inappropriate throwing of uh, waste, eh, of uh, non, uh, sorry, uh, inappropriate, uh, inappropriate, sorry, inappropriate throwing of things that are not supposed to be at the right place. Eh? For example, uh, just now recyclables at landfills. Right, uh, noise pollution, uh, noise pollution. There is also noise pollution, um, which encompasses roadway noise, aircraft noise, industrial noise, as well as high intensity sonar. Okay? So noise which is exceeds certain range of um, decibels, yeah? something that is too loud okay? is considered as uh, pollution. Okay. Then there is also soil pollution, occurs when chemicals are released by spill or underground leakage, yeah? uh, hydrocarbons or heavy metals, yeah? for example, from the factories, and also from the use of herbicides, pesticides, fluorinated hydrocarbons, which are all chemicals. Yeah? So in agriculture, if you use like pesticides, chemical pesticides, so it, later on it will go into the soil and it can cause the pollution uh, in the underground. And then uh, radio radioactive contamination uh, resulting from nuclear power generation, nuclear weapons research, manufacture or deployment. And yeah? this is from human activities, right? Um, from war, yeah? uh, like the, like in World War II, something like, uh, you know, they, they use these uh, nuclear weapons yeah? so they can cause uh, contamination of uh, radioactive compounds. Right, and then thermal pollution when there is a temperature change in natural water bodies uh, caused by human influence, such as the use of water as coolant in a power plant, whereby the heat is released to the water bodies and it can cause uh, the rise of temperature in the water bodies. Yeah? So it can cause thermal pollution. So, what's the effect? Uh, it will cause damage to the aquatic organisms. Eh? So, if let's say that the water at the uh, in the water bodies is normally at uh, maybe like uh, 30 degrees, yeah? but when there is a release of heat, so it can increase the temperature to maybe 50 to 60, so it can uh, cause damage to the aquatic uh, organisms. And then uh, viral pollution, okay, this one is something to do with the presence of um, overhead power lines, motorway billboards, yeah? this is uh, for example, if you're in um, where is it? Times Square in New York, there are so many billboards. Yeah? So it, it can cause this kind of visual pollution. It can perhaps um, affect our sights. Yeah? If you see too much of this um, extreme uh, visual things. Yeah? And then water pollution, which is one of the major types of pollution. Uh, caused by the discharge of wastewater from commercial and industrial waste, yeah? untreated domestic sewage, yeah? untreated domestic sewage means domestic sewage is those uh, wastewater from uh, plants, uh, sorry, from housing areas. Yeah? If they are not treated and they are just disposed to the water, to the river, to the sea, they can cause um, pollution. It can it can affect um, the living things in the water. Yeah? So those domestic sewage, ideally it should be treated before it is disposed. So um, the sewerage department, the one that uh, you will be, uh, not uh, the one, but the officer who will be, uh, uh, who will, uh, sorry, sorry, a, a talk by the officer from SSP, okay? Uh, the, uh, the, the department is actually responsible for treating the, do the domestic sewage in Kuching uh, before the sewage is uh, discharged to the river, okay? Uh, so that is the responsibility of sewerage. It's not just in Sarawak, but in every state, there is a sewerage department, Jabatan uh, Pembentungan. So that's the role of the department. Um, right, chemical contaminants can also cause water pollution, right? Uh, apart from the man-made contaminants, 
natural disasters such as volcanic eruptions, hurricanes, yeah, can also cause uh, contamination of water from the sewage because of, you know, the uh, the natural. I mean, because of the, uh, yeah, because of the volcanic eruption and so on, it can create all these things of uh, contamination from sewage, right? And also the petrochemical spills from ruptured boats, automobiles, and all rigs or refineries. Yeah? So these are examples of um, uh, the natural uh, contaminants, yeah? factors, natural factors, and then greenhouse gases. Uh, such as carbon dioxide, methane, uh, they are resulted from many activities, for example, from the vehicles, from the pollutions, uh, from the factories, right? So what's the effect is that uh, it will create, the, it, will, it will actually trap the heat uh, in the environment, it can uh, increase the temperature, yeah? uh, can cause the global warming, right? And that affects the earth climate. Yeah? So those are the, the effects of the greenhouse gases or the air pollution. Okay. All right. So what are the effects of pollution? Um to the human, it can trigger lots of uh diseases, yeah? uh, lots of health uh, problems like uh, respiratory disease, yeah. Also, pollution can cause respiratory disease. Cardiovascular disease, throat inflammation, chest pain, and congestion. Yeah? Uh, so this is very apparent during, for example, like haze. Uh, when during the the time of haze, uh, so it can cause lots of respiratory uh, problems, especially to those who have asthma. Right, right. So that's one of the effects of the pollution, uh, the air pollution. Uh, water pollution it causes death. Because of what? Because of the contamination of drinking water by the untreated sewage in developing countries, especially. And also not just uh, the contamination of the drinking water, but also uh, contamination of the, for example, like the mercury, uh, mercury in the water, in the water bodies. It, so it can contaminate the living organism, the aquatic organisms like fish. So when human consume fish, we also consume the contaminants indirectly. Yeah? So it's not just the, the drink, the contamination of water, but also those, uh, the, the existence or the accumulation of those contaminants in uh, aquatic organisms that humans consume at the end, for example. And then noise pollution, it can induce hearing loss, high blood pressure, stress, and sleep disturbance. Uh, mercury in water, yeah, I talked about mercury just now. And then uh, older people induced by air pollution, yeah, lead and other heavy metals cause neurological problems. And then chemical and radioactive substances can cause cancer as well as birth defects. Okay, I'd like to share with you this video about the effect of radioactive pollution on uh, during the World War uh, in Japan, yeah? so what happened to the people that are that are there during that time? Okay, so let's have let's um, let's let's have a look at this video.
Okay. Uh, so that's the that's the impact of um uh, the the war the the, the nuclear uh, the radiation yeah, to the uh, to the survivor of the war during that time. You can see that you guys can watch the video just now, right? I hope that I share the the right screen. Is it? Yes. Yes. Okay. So you can see from the video that uh, the uh, the survivor during that time they were ten years old during the war yeah, during the duration, but they suffer uh, the whole life. Yeah? Uh, from the radiation effects. Yeah. Okay, so you can see how severe the damage is. Right? Uh, okay, back to back to our lecture. So chemical and radioactive substances can cause cancer as well as birth defects, yeah? and also the lifetime effects actually. Yeah. You can see from 10 years old they suffer from all those uh radiation effects. Okay. So yeah, apart from just now, when I say uh con uh, pollution, the water pollution, uh, apart from the mercury, apart from the contaminated water, uh, one of the emerging contaminants in water bodies is plastic or microplastics. And microplastic is actually more dangerous because um, the size is small. And you know what happens is that there is a research that shows microplastics exist in aquatic organisms like fish. Yeah. So you can you just imagine that, you know, the, the fish actually eat that microplastics, right? And what are those microplastics? There are so many uh, hazardous components, yeah? So what happened? Who, who eat fish at the end? So it's humans eat fish and, you know, you can we, we can also suffer from uh, the uh, pollution, the, the plastic pollution in the ocean, yeah? Right? Okay. So that's the effect of uh, pollution to the human, right? So the pollution also causes effects to the environment. Yeah? For example, the emission of carbon dioxide can cause ocean acidification, and uh, that uh, going to result in decrease in the pH of the earth ocean uh, as carbon dioxide become dissolved. So it means that the oceans become acidic. Yeah? When it is acidic, what happens also the Aquatic organisms will be uh, affected and will be endangered, right? And then uh, the emission of greenhouse gases, uh, I mentioned about it, uh, it leads to global warming, yeah? affects the ozone layer, and it affects the ecosystems in many ways. So greenhouse gases, examples are carbon dioxide, methane, yeah? carbon dioxide, that means uh, you, you feel like hot because there is no oxygen, because they do create, they trap the uh, heat in the environment, yeah. So that's why it's, uh, it causes global warming. Yeah? Um, nitrogen oxides removed from air by rain from fertilized land can cause change of species in ecosystem. Uh, this is nitrogen oxides from from uh, fertilizer, yeah, from the pesticides. Yeah? And then uh, smoke and haze can reduce the amount of sunlight received by plants to carry out photosynthesis and damage the plants. Uh, haze and like we experienced haze like uh, a year ago, two years ago, or maybe yeah, a few years ago, right? You can you can feel that how uh, how how I think, how sucks it is, right? To breathe uh, air uh, with haze. Yeah, uh, smoke is is actually a combination of smoke and fog. Smoke, smoke, asap, uh, and fog. So that's why it's called smoke. Uh, so smoke can also uh, trap uh, the heat in the environment. So it can cause the global warming as well. Right. Uh, soil can become infertile and unsuitable for plants. This will affect other organisms yeah? when the smoke, uh, well, sorry, when the soil is uh, polluted, right? When the soil is, it contains like contaminants. So it becomes not suitable for the growth of plants. Right, and what happened is that when the plants, uh, when some of the plants die, where the plants become the food to certain uh, organisms, it will affect the food web, yeah, the the food cycle, uh, yeah, the ecosystem. 
Right, sulfur dioxide can cause acid rain, which lowers the pH value of the soil. But also, it can um, also corrode many things. Eh? Acid rain, when you know, you just imagine uh, the rain that falls is acidic. Yeah, it's not just um, affect the soil, but also it can also endanger the uh, humans. All right. So, what is the control and prevention of pollution? What is meant by control? So, there are two different concepts. Pollution control is we just control, like the pollution is still happening, but we perhaps we reduce uh, the rate of the pollution, yeah? uh, reduce or, or we uh, yeah we decrease the level of the pollution, but it's still happening. Yeah, so that is pollution control. Um, so it it uh, it is related to the control of emission and efforts into the air, the water or soil, right? Uh, pollution prevention is you cut it straight away, like you read, you you cut uh, the pollution or prevent it from happening. So that is pollution. Uh, that is prevention. Yeah? Uh, pollution prevention approach seeks to increase the efficiency of a process you know, by reducing the amount of pollution generated at its source. Okay. So what is like um, we talk about environment. Yeah? Uh, so here. Here is actually where the biotechnology comes into play. So how are we going to treat, how are we going to solve the environmental pollutions from a biotechnology perspective? Okay, that is something that I asked you guys in the mind map activity, right, on the lead. So I'm going to have a look at it later. But, but first, let's have a look at what is happening recently or in the last year when, uh, when there is a lockdown around the world. Uh, the effect is on the reduction of the pollution across the world. You can see this is some of the headlines. Um, noise pollution falls yeah, as lockdown rings in sound of silence, yeah, especially in uh, busy cities like uh, New Delhi. And then the air pollution because of less vehicles, less uh, industrial activities, right? So that's result in a uh, reduction of the pollutions, air quality, you see, air quality is improved, right? And what else? Yeah, so that's what happened during the lockdown, the blessing in disguise. Okay, now, what is the roles of environmental biotech in reducing environmental pollutions? Before that, you have to understand what is, what is biotech actually? How, what is, what is the underlying principles of biotech? And only then you can answer this question. So what is biotech? You are in you are already in your final semester. After this, you are going to graduate. So if you attend an interview after this, like uh, maybe people ask you what is the roles of biotech and what is biotechnology? So perhaps you should answer this question. Well, okay, so before I, I ask you this question, what is biotechnology? Any Answer from you. That when we when we want to overcome the environmental pollution, it can be by different ways. Chemical ways also work, right? But uh, that is not that is not our concern. Yes, we are biotechnologists. So, what is biotech? What is the principle of biotech? Any answer? Yes. Are you with me? Uh, do you hear, Doctor? Yes. Okay, so I come around to Allah Hilver Tattoo. What is about the biotech? Biotech mm -hmm. is to combine the technology and uh, life. Mm -hmm. So uh, we utilize the technology into the biological system with the living organism and it will create a uh, developed products. Uh, that's it. Okay, thank you for your answer. Okay, let me rephrase your points. Eh? So we actually use the biological living things, put it into technology, and we use that to solve uh, the, the problems. I mean, whatever the, uh, the environmental problems. Okay, but you got the points. Thank you very much. Okay, anyone? Answers in the chat box.
Utilization of living organism. Yes, yes. Right. Okay. So by right, you should know what is biotechnology. Okay. Uh, it's not something that is so strange. You you are in third year. You have studied a lot about biotech. So when we talk about um when we talk about the use of biology to solve problems and make products, yes. Right. Thank you. Okay, so when you talk about uh, the roles of biotechnology to reduce the environmental pollutions, in this case, pollutions, but right? in environmental problems, there are many problems. It's not just pollution. Okay, so what are examples? Can I, yeah, let's have a look at the answers that you put on ED. Uh, okay. Conversion of biodegradable materials and waste into products. Yes. By how? How we save it? How you convert it? Assessing what? What the, the chats? No. Assessing and manipulating living things with technologies to solve problems. Yes. Improve living quality and remediate. Yes. So the basic idea is uh, living things, okay, living things, biological uh, system. So what is meant by biological system? Uh, we use, we manipulate microorganisms, uh, good microorganisms, uh, perhaps also uh, some organisms like uh, animal cells or plant cells. Uh, and we try to utilize them to solve the problems. So that is actually the the basics of biotech. So it's, it's very simple, actually. Yeah? It, it can't be separated from the living thing. So that's why the bio comes uh, in the first uh, term. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so conversion of biodegradable materials and waste into products by the use of microorganisms. There are lots of bacteria that are capable of degrading many types of contaminants. Yeah? Yes. Uh, use microorganisms to degrade past waste such as plastic. Yes, correct. Use algae biocatan. So apart from microorganisms, there are also other organisms like algae, yeah, that can be um, manipulated, uh, whereby we grow the algae, and then this is a biocatan. The concept of it is we grow the algae, uh, the algae uh, do the bio uh, sorry, the photosynthesis, right? Capture the carbon dioxide, yeah. Uh, remember the carbon dioxide, which is a gas, a greenhouse gases. So it captured the carbon dioxide to do the photosynthesis and release the oxygen. So it means that we get more oxygen. Yeah. Okay, good. Environmental monitoring, yes. By how? Uh, yeah, perhaps you use, yeah, by, by using the micro the organisms. You use microbes to create biofuels, correct? Yeah, biofuel is one of the important contributions of biotech to reduce uh, the air pollution, because the air pollution caused by the emission of the uh, gases from the vehicles eh, is because we use the fossil-based fuel, fossil-based fuel. So biofuels is uh, much greener. It doesn't emit those kind of uh, hazardous uh, gases. Eh? Bioremediation, we're gonna talk about bioremediation in the fifth, in the sixth topic. Uh, six one, but yeah, six topic. Bioremediation basically is the use of organisms to remediate. Remediate means to convert the hazardous compounds into less toxic compounds. Right? For example, at uh, contaminated areas like oil spill, yeah, we use the microbes to remediate. Remediate means it's convert into this uh, less hazardous. The okay, biofuel again, and then gas phase bioreactor. Yes, gas phase bioreactor is used to. Um, to filter the air, create yeah? biodegradable bioplastics. Yeah, instead of having the plastics that can't be recycled, if let's say we create bioplastic or biodegradable bioplastics that can be degraded if you dump it, uh, you know, in the environment, uh, so that can uh, that can reduce the pollution. Use bioenzymes to help maintaining clean environment. Yes, because. Uh, there are many enzymes secreted by microorganisms that can do lots of things. So these are under studies, under investigation. 
uh, is it, there is no end uh, when we talk about the research. Eh? So, for example, like today that we have so many discoveries, but more and more are needed from time to time. So that's why you guys more and more biotechnologies are needed. Eh? Right. Okay. Thank you for your participation. Okay. Let's go back to our lecture. Um. Okay, so that answers uh, this question here, roles of environmental biotech in reducing environmental pollutions in general. We're going to have a look in specific for air and water pollution after this. Right now, let's uh, move to the second part of the lecture, which is air pollution. Uh, so air pollution is one of the major pollutions uh, among all, yeah, right, because air is one of the important components of the earth, yeah, we breathe uh, air, right? So that's why it's one of the important uh, aspects. All right, so what is meant by air pollution? Air pollution is the introduction of, introduction of, um, introduction of chemicals or particulate matter or biological materials that can cause discomfort, disease or death to humans damage other living organisms such as food crops, damage the natural environment or mute environment, right? So those, it, that is the definition of air pollution. Okay? Uh, it comes from both natural and human-made sources. Natural sources include uh, ozone, volcanic combustion gases. Uh, Man-made sources are those from the man activities like the vehicles, the factories, and so on. Okay. Principal stationary pollution sources include coal fire, power plants, oil refineries, petrochemical plants, nuclear waste disposal, yeah, and so on. And from the agriculture, it comes from all these uh, pesticides, herbicides. Yeah? Okay. So the effects of the okay, let's have a look at air pollutants first. So this is examples of the effects of air pollution, the haze. Yeah? I hope you are not hearing. I think in two years ago. Are you guys here when haze happened? So has in Sarawak because of the forest uh, fire in Kalimantan. So you can, yeah, you can see some this the same environment like this, yeah, the haze. So what happened? You feel like suffocated, right? Because it's the the heat is there and it's really not healthy. Okay, so. The air pollutants, what are the air pollutants? Uh, it can be classified into primary and secondary, but before that, air pollutants are those substances that can cause harm to humans and can cause uh, air pollutions. It can be in the form of solid particles, liquid droplets, or gases. Okay, right. So it can be divided into primary or secondary pollutants. Primary pollutants, those are directly emitted from a process into the environment. For example, sulfur dioxide produced by volcanoes and in various industrial processes, carbon monoxide from uh, combustion, incomplete combustion of fuel yeah, from the vehicles, radioactive pollutants from the nuclear explosions, nuclear events, yeah, uh, more explosive natural processes. So just now you see the effect of those uh, radioactive pollutants to uh, to to the people who survived during the war, yeah? right? And then VOC, volatile organic compounds. Uh, so these compounds are released in uh, sorry, these compounds are contained in aerosols. For example, like uh, the the aerosols used for uh, for for these uh, I think aerosols. For the what's the word? But yeah, to remove the order, the the, the uh yeah, the aerosols. So this volatile comp uh volatile organic compounds eh, divided into methane and non-methane VOCs. And then atmospheric particulate matter, which consists of tiny particles of solid or liquid suspended in gas, either man-made or from the volcanoes. Uh, CFC, CFC is also air pollutant, uh, harmful to the ozone layer, right? But nowadays, the products that contain CFC are banned from use. 
you perhaps you may no longer see uh, aerosols that contains the acids. If I'm mistaken. Yeah, ammonia, ammonia from the fertilizer uh, emitted from the agricultural processes, right? Uh, such as the use of urea as fertilizers. Okay. So ammonia can also cause the air pollution. Okay, secondary pollutants are those that are not emitted directly, but they uh, form as a result of the reaction uh, between the primary pollutants. Yeah? Uh, so one of them is smoke. Yeah? smoke I, I tell you just now, it's a combination of smoke and fog. Uh, smoke and fog, yeah? so, so it's smoke. Right, uh, so what happens is that the smoke, it can uh, trap the heat in the environment. It can cause the warming. Uh, fog itself is not that really hazardous. Fog is a natural, natural, um, natural occurrence. But when it combines with the smoke, so what happens? It can be trapped in the environment. Yeah. So if you see here, this is uh, as, this is an example of fog. Uh, uh, Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. So it's, it's very well known with fog. So fog itself is not that hazardous, but when it combined with smoke. Yeah, so that is where the hazard uh, you know, comes into play. All right, ground level ozone uh, form from the reaction between nitrogen oxides and volatile organic compounds. So these two compounds are primary pollutants, right? So it can create uh, ozone, ground level ozone, whereby this ozone will be hazardous uh, to the human, yeah? right? Okay, so that is a secondary pollutants. So what are the sources of air pollution? So from it's from the human activities, from the power plants, from the factories, right? Uh, from the waste incinerators, furnaces, because they release the, for example, the carbon monoxide, yeah? Uh, from the mobile sources like ships, vehicles, aircraft, from fumes, this one from paint, hairspray, varnish, aerosol sprays. This is uh, VOC, the volatile organic compounds. Uh, a waste disposition in landfills, which generate methane. Methane is a greenhouse gases. So that's how the air pollution can happen, right? Uh, natural sources from uh, dust from natural sources, the large areas of land with little or no vegetation. Methane, uh, methane can also be uh, produced from natural sources, for example, emitted by the digestion of Food by animals, a natural process. Smoke and carbon monoxide from wildfires. The wildfires, it can happen, sometimes it can happen uh, because of the hot temperature. It can happen by itself. It's not because of the human activities. Right? Uh, so they release carbon monoxide and smoke. So that's from the wildfires. Volcanic activity, which produce sulfur, chlorine and ash articulates, yeah? so this can contaminate the air as well. Okay, so the measurement of air quality, how are we going to know whether or not the quality of air is good, whether it's um, polluted, and what what is the quality? So it is measured by what we call uh, a pollutant index, API, uh, is a standard scale to measure the quality of air based on average concentration of air pollutants, uh, namely sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, carbon monoxide, ozone, and particulate matter with diameter less than 10 micrometers. So these are all the components that are uh, used to uh, measure the quality of air. Okay. So the index is that uh, is from zero. So zero to 50 is classified as good, the quality of air. So the coat color is uh, green, uh, 51 to 100 moderate, yeah, yellow. So I think this is quite, uh, this is quite common, the, the color coat eh, from green to yellow, from orange to red. Even if you see the, uh, the zone, the pandemic zones, right? Uh, there is also from green zone, uh, yellow zone. So it's, it's, this is quite generic, the color code from good to hazardous. So you can see up to, uh, let's say, orange is from 101 to 200. 
unhealthy. It's considered as unhealthy. Uh, 200 to 300, very unhealthy, and above 300 is hazardous. Yeah, it's uh, red color. Okay, this is, if you see here, um, the situation during haze or worse API. Uh, this is in Palankaraya in Indonesia, and even in Kuching in Sarawak, we also not we often face haze because of the uh, bushfire in Kalimantan. But luckily this year we don't have. Uh, last year, last year we don't have haze. Uh, but yeah, it's quite a common occurrence in Sarawak. And also in Semenanjung, in some parts of Semenanjung. Okay, uh, I want to show you this video on what happened in Palankaraya uh, when the air quality there was was during the hazardous uh, index. No sound? Oh, okay, okay. Can you hear the sound now? No. No? Okay. Oh, I have no idea how to figure out this. Uh, sorry for that. So you can just watch the video. No sound, is it? Okay, sorry for that. I thought that you can hear it. So just now also you cannot hear the, the sound. You can only watch the video just now, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, so actually, it's just to show uh, the situation in Palankaraya uh, during um, during the haze. Yeah. Okay, sorry for that. Okay, so there's nothing much actually spoken by the people there. Just to show you the video, okay. Um, right, so you can see how horrible it is Yeah. when the... Uh, API is above 300. That is an example of above 300. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, sorry for that. Okay, so now I have an activity. Uh, is a quiz time, okay. right? Um, so you guys all over in Malaysia. So let's go to go to Samara High. Okay. 
okay. My question is, question is, Okay, so I have a question for you. What is the current FDI in Kota Samara Hut? So just guess. Okay, you know that just now um, there is a index, right? So what is the current FDI? Okay, you go to www.menti.com and use the code here, 74867673 and answer the just guess, just any value. And then don't forget to put your metric number. Your metric number at you know at the below of your answer. What is the current API in Koto Samara Hard? So you can see just now Z from zero to fifty is healthy. Right? Just guess. Yeah. Uh from Uh, 51 to 100 moderate, 101 to 200 unhealthy, 201 to 300 very unhealthy, uh, more than 300 is hazardous. So which scale do you think um, the situation in Kota Samara had now? What is the API values? No, just give the value, the value. Like if let's say 25, yes. Uh, 31 to 40 to give the value and also your metric number i want to give uh, the closest answer i will give you a gift so if you don't give uh, your metric number then i don't know who answer what 95 okay 30 mm -hmm. i'll give you 30 seconds more This part of the six Okay, thanks up. Is that all? You just let's say, uh, yeah, I will find the nearest value, and perhaps there are more than one answer, then I will just uh, do the lucky draw. Okay. Okay, okay, thanks for your participation. Right, most of you answer below 50. How sure you are? Okay, uh, I'll have a look at it. So let's have a look at... Um, the answer... Okay, thanks for your participation. I'll have a look at uh, who answers the nearest. Well, how are we going to know about it? Uh, I also do not know at the moment. So in order to check the API, um, we can go to a website for this. Uh, this is under um, DOE, Department of Environment, uh, whereby they have this 
sort of um, a pollutant index and you can check the real time API of any place in Malaysia. Okay, so let's have a look at this website. Okay, so this is the website. So this is where you can check the API. Huh? Uh, okay, let's say you want to find just now. Okay. 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 Samarahan is 25. So I will I will find this will answer 25. So if there are more than uh, one answer, then I will uh, after that I will I will do the lucky draw. Okay. So the answer is 25. The API in Samarahan. Okay. So basically, this is you can see this website, right? So this is where you can check the API, the API A policy index in Malaysia. Okay. Right. Okay. So the answer is 25. And you can also check in your place, like in maybe in KL. What's the KL? The value in KL. Uh, in, it's a bit higher, yeah. 57 in like this and line. In Kuala Lumpur. In Kuala Lumpur is 65. 65 is much higher. Perhaps we have more people, more activities, vehicles. Okay, so this is the place where you can check the API. Okay, back to our lecture. Okay, that's about API. Or in Malay is uh, IPU, Index Pencemaran right? Udara. Okay. API and IP is the same thing. All right, so what are the roles of biotechnologists in overcoming air pollution? Now we go to specific on uh, air pollution. So what are examples of um, the contributions of biotech. There are actually many, but here I just uh, feature some of the contributions or some of the some of the examples of um, contributions met by researchers so far. Forgot to share the screen. Okay, the roles of biotech. So example is biofuel. Yeah. So the reason why biofuel is is the generic. They are biodiesel. They are bioethanol, and bioethanol can be used to uh, replace the existing uh, fuel. Yeah. For the uh, for the vehicles, right? So that's how it can actually stop the environmental pollution, right? Uh, and also it has been used actually. Yeah. So for example, like uh, in London. They have used uh, biofuel to run the buses in London, yeah, whereby the biofuel is made from uh, coffee waste. Yeah? And also, uh, there is biojet fuel, means that the fuel is used by jets, by the aeroplanes. Yeah? So it's not just for the vehicles, uh, the vehicles on the land, but also the uh, aeroplanes, the jets. Right? So the reason why biofuel is because it can eliminate the emission of the uh, carbon monoxide, the, the greenhouse gases. So that's how it can solve, it can reduce the environmental pollution. Gas-phase bioreactors for the um, for the abatement of hexane. For the, I mean, they reduce the hexane to some uh, to a gas or to a product that is not uh, hazardous to the environment by the action of uh, asbestos niger in this case, uh, by the action of the microorganisms. Okay, there are many microorganisms that can be used and how to know which microorganism is, is through research. Okay? Perhaps people have discovered uh, some microorganisms, but there are actually more and more that can be uh, explored and to, uh, for various applications to degrade different uh, contaminants, yeah? for example. But this is an example of the contribution of Bioreactor. Okay? Uh, what else? This one is bio curtain uh, by the use of algae. Uh, so the concept here is that the algae are grown. The algae are grown. So the algae, they undergo photosynthesis. So it means that they uh, use the carbon dioxide 
release, right, in the environment, they capture the carbon dioxide and they emit oxygen. So it means that more oxygen, we, we can have more oxygen means uh, much healthier and much uh, uh, cleaner, the air. Okay? And this one, algae biocatalysts, they call it, they have been uh, applied in, I think, in Europe, huh? whereby they put this uh, biocatalyst, you can see the green things here, this is algae, right? So the, al the algae conduct the photosynthesis and emit oxygen. So you can expect that this area is rich with oxygen because of the action of the algae. Yeah? So that's how it can uh, solve the problems of the trapping of the carbon dioxide. Okay, so this is an example of uh, application of biotech in reducing the air pollution. Okay, there are actually more. So this is just some examples. Okay, any questions so far before we move to the last topic, water pollution? No, okay. So please um, find out more, more um, contributions of biotech in reducing air pollution besides all these points that I mentioned here. There are actually more actually, like air, how, what else? You can you can you can find from the articles from from the newspaper perhaps. Eh? So what are the contributions of biotech? Okay, now let's move to the water pollution. It's another uh, major type of pollution apart from air. Okay, the reason is because our earth is made from seventy one percent water. The uh, the earth surface is seventy one percent water, right? Uh, so it means that. Uh, the amount of the place covered by water is massive, yeah? and water is one of the major components of the earth. Right. Okay. So, what are the major water pollutants? So, water pollution is, uh, by definition, is contamination of water bodies. So, water bodies means the lakes, the rivers, the oceans. The groundwater, right? Uh, and when those water bodies are contaminated with contaminants that are not supposed to be there and that can cause uh, hazards, no? so that is when the water pollution occurs. No? Uh, water pollution occurs when pollutants are discharged directly or indirectly into water bodies uh, without adequate treatment to remove the harmful compounds. Okay? So the pollutants come from factories, come from the uh, the use of pesticides come from uh, what from the perhaps the oil spill no? from the activities uh, the human activities right so the classes of water pollutants uh, it can be divided into different categories uh, the first category is disease causing agents means that the pollutants that can cause diseases uh, some of the pathogenic uh, microorganisms or bacteria. Uh, viruses, protozoa, parasitic worms. So when they enter the sewage treatment systems and uh, when they come from the untreated waste uh, and dispose to the water bodies, so that is how uh, the disease can be spread and it can cause hazards to the uh, environment, to the human. And then uh, another type of water pollutant is oxygen demanding waste, meaning to say that when these waste are dumped in the water bodies, they use the oxygen, they use up all the oxygens in the water bodies, uh, leaving, I mean, causing depletion of oxygen, meaning to say that the water, uh, the oxygen is no longer has enough oxygen uh, to be used by the aquatic organism. So that is the hazard. That is where the hazard occurs, yeah, because of this uh, waste, because the waste use up the oxygen. So these wastes are called oxygen demanding waste. Uh, means that they use the oxygen, they, uh, they, they utilize the oxygen, yeah, right. So it causes uh, death of the uh, aquatic organisms like fish. And then uh, water soluble in organic pollutants such as uh, acids, salts, toxic metals, uh, although they are soluble in the water, but they can uh, perhaps uh, change the pH like acids. Yeah, the change the pH means uh, what happened, the 
condition of the water bodies is no longer suitable for the survival of the aquatic organisms. That's how it can cause uh, the hazards. And also it can make the water uh, unsafe to be drank. It can cause the death of the aquatic life. Yeah? And then uh, water-soluble nitrates and phosphates. Uh, this one can cause excessive growth of algae uh, and other water plants. Okay, so this in turn will deplete the oxygen in the water. And what happened, the oxygen that are supposed to be used by the aquatic organisms like fish, uh, yeah, can't be used by the fish and it will, it will cause death to the fish. Yeah, and also it can contaminate, you know, it can actually, these uh, contaminants can contaminate the uh, water. Yeah. Right, so those are the classes of water pollutants. This is just to show you the sources of water pollutants yeah, from the factories, uh, from the agriculture by the use of the pesticides, right, from the commercial areas, yeah, from the untreated sewage, right, and from the factories, from the runoff, from the eruption. Okay. So pathogens in water pollution. So there is the most common example of pathogen is E. coli. E. coli, uh, there is a certain um, strain of E. coli. Uh, e. coli. E. coli has many strains, uh, many strains is many types. Uh, yeah. So some of those uh, strains, they are pathogenic. Pathogenic means they can cause uh, diseases. Uh, so when the water is contaminated with E. coli, with these pathogens, that is where it can uh, cause the hazards to the human uh, when the I mean, when when human consume the tree uh, the, the water for drinking okay so what are the symptoms include uh, when these uh, pathogens are consumed by the humans uh, blood diarrhea abdominal pains cramps nausea vomiting fever okay so these are the health damage right so apart from E. coli, other pathogenic microorganisms, there are these um, microorganisms, Bucorderia pseudomali, Cryptosporidium parvum, Giardia lambia, Salmonella, Novovirus. So there are many types of, but the most common is uh, E. coli, right, pickle coliforms. Okay, what are the source points of the water pollution? It can be divided into non-point source, uh, where non-point source refers to the diffuse contamination that does not originate from a single discrete source. Means that it comes from uh, indirectly, for example, like from the use of uh, pesticides eh, from the agricultural land. So what happened is that when the pesticide is consumed and the, for example, the nitrogen compounds leak into the soil and then it goes into the uh, underground system, and those will be transferred uh, eventually to the water bodies, right? So that is from non-point source. It's not directly from, I mean, it's not directly, the contaminants is not directly uh, goes to the water bodies, but it comes from other sources first, and then it goes to the water bodies, right? Uh, okay, so how to, how to uh, eliminate this problem? So there is a concept for this uh, repairing buffer, whereby you can see from the picture here, this is the water bodies, like the river, uh, the river. So before, let's say this is the agricultural plains. Can you see the picture on the slide? The one that I pointed uh, at the bottom here. So let's say this is the agricultural area where uh, the use of pesticides uh, is uh, happening. Yeah. So what happened is that when uh, those um, nitrogen compounds goes into the soil, right? So before it goes to, instead of going to the water bodies directly, so this uh, repairing buffer is created in order to contain those kinds of contaminants and perhaps it will uh, eliminate the emission of, uh, of uh, the total amount of the contaminants directly to the water bodies. So that is the purpose of this uh, riparian buffer. Yeah? It's called riparian buffer. It's, it's like um, it's like an area that contains water as well. Like here, you can see the 
this, this is this is an example of preparing buffer. So that's how it works. That's how it can uh, help to protect the stream from direct uh, contamination. Okay. I hope that's clear. All right. So non-point source. So point source. It refers to the pollution. Uh, sorry, uh, contaminants that enter the waterways from directly from the sources to the water bodies. Like for example, this one you can see from the pipe and then dish. It goes directly to the water bodies. Okay, so it's opposite to the non-point source as well. So this one is a direct source of contaminants to the water bodies. So actually, the controls it can be various. Yeah, it can be uh, right uh, the treatment of the wastewater before it is discharged to the water bodies. Yeah, this is what is being done by the uh, the, the sewerage uh, department. Yeah, right. So they treat the, the sewage the sewage with uh, microorganisms, perhaps. Yeah, uh, and the microbes convert uh, the hazardous compounds in the sewage into less hazardous compounds before it is released to the uh, environment. There are actually many ways how to uh, control the emission of contaminants directly to the water bodies. Right. So measurement of water pollution. How um how we know that whether the quality of the water is good or not uh, is by the measurement. Yeah, there are few ways how to analyze the water. Uh, is by physical testing. It's either by physical testing, by chemical testing, or by biological testing. Okay. So first, the first step is by sampling the water, and then, what is meant by physical testing? Physical testing means you, uh, you analyze the physical criteria of the water. For example, the turbidity. What is the color? Whether it's uh, kerup or not? not turbid. Turbidity is kerup. Um, whether the smell, there is a smell or not, yeah? something like something to do with the physical aspects of the uh, sample, the water sample, the temperature, yeah? the solid concentration, the total suspended solids. So that is meant by physical testing. Um, chemical testing is by the measurement of certain compounds inside the chemicals, uh, include the pH measurement, the BOD, COD, uh, the nutrients like the nitrate, phosphorus compounds, uh, the metals, the oil and grease, uh, total petroleum, hydrocarbons, pesticides. Yeah? So it's something to do with the chemical contents inside the water. So that is chemical testing. And biological testing is we check the certain, uh, I mean, certain, the, the presence of certain microorganisms. So the easiest one is the Coliforms, the bacteria like E. coli, because we know that E. coli is one of the most common pathogens. So, if let's say the water samples contain a uh, high amount of E. coli, it means that the water is not safe. Yeah? So, that is the indicator, right? Uh, so, the biological testing involves uh, the measurement of those kind of microbial indicators, yeah? uh, where one of it is E. coli. So there are various kits nowadays uh, created. So it doesn't need like uh, lab various uh, reactions or chemical reactions. Yeah. You have the kit and then you get these water samples and you test it. If let's say, you know, it, it gives some sort of indicators that shows the presence of, uh, for example, the coliforms like the E. coli. So you can have the results straight away. So that's the way how the water samples are measured in terms of their quality and same like the a quality there is also the water quality index wqi and the wqi yeah uh, yeah so this water quality index is a means by which the water quality data is summarized and categorized whether or not it's safe um, whether or not it's hazardous okay but it's not as popular as uh API because um, we rarely hear these kind of things. Yeah, so API is quite is quite uh, common to be heard during the haste season. Yeah? But there is also this kind of standard uh, index for water. Okay, right. let's have a look at this website.
So this is the website that shows the water quality standards that yeah, you can check. Yeah. Uh, the water is classified from one to one, two, three, four, five, yeah, five, five classes yeah, according to the contents of certain components in the water. Okay. Uh, class one is uh, natural levels of or absence. I mean, this is the cleanest uh, level of water, class one. You can see from uh, class five is the one that is here. Yeah, so it, it is based on the measurement of certain components, like all of these components. There are so many actually. Yeah. yeah. And for the National Water Quality Standards for Malaysia, there are a few parameters that they refer to. Like just now, when we talk about API, they measure certain uh, particles in the air, right? Uh, for example, the nitrogen oxide, uh, the carbon uh, monoxide, and so on, carbon dioxide. And then for the water quality, it's based on certain parameters as well, like from, for example, the BOD, COD, the dissolved oxygen, the pH, uh, what else? The salinity, the total dissolved solid, and so on. Okay, and you can see uh, for class one is for the conservation of natural environment. I mean, they are the every classes of water here is suitable for different uh, applications. Yeah, this of the level of the comp uh, components inside the water is different. Okay, so let's go back to the slide. Okay, um, so the same question, like for the air pollution, what are the roles of biotechnologies in overcoming water pollution? So now it's water. So how are we gonna treat the water pollution using biotech approaches? So one of them is bioremediation. Bioremediation is a concept whereby, uh, let's say, the sea, let's say the sea or whatever the water bodies is contaminated with contaminants. Uh, we use bacteria, we use microorganisms to treat, to remediate. Remediate means to treat it, break down the pollutants uh, into less hazardous uh, compounds. Uh, the reason why is because some microorganisms, uh, those pollutants are food to them. Yeah? For example, mercury, there are certain microbes that can eat mercury. And when they eat mercury, they metabolize it, they release it. I mean, they convert the mercury into less hazardous compounds. So that's how the environmental pollutants can be uh, eliminated from the place. So that is the basic principles of bioremediation. Okay. So bioremediation is one of the example of the contribution of biotech in overcoming water pollution. Okay, there are so many research done on bioremediation. Bioremediation is a generic concept. Uh, when people do the research, they they uh, investigate different things. Some of them might uh, perhaps investigate uh, the degradation of mercury. Some um, investigate uh, the degradation of other heavy metals. Yeah, because uh, there are lots of contaminants and there are so many microorganisms. Yeah? Right, another one is plastic waste. How to treat this plastic waste? Because plastic waste is one of the contaminants in the sea, in the water, that is. So uh, the roles of biotech here is perhaps we want to tackle the plastic yeah? instead of using the plastics that can't be degraded. So why not we create something that uh, plastics that can be degraded or biodegradable plastics. Yeah? Biodegradable means it can be degraded after certain time. So if you dump plastics for 20 years, uh, the common, the, the synthetic plastics, it will be there for 20 years. But uh, when we talk about biodegradable plastics, if let's say the conditions for the biodegradation is met, so the plastics can be degraded uh, and there is no more plastics after 20 years. So that's how 
uh, that's the difference between biodegradable and synthetic plastics. Huh? So uh, those uh, biodegradable plastics, how to create it? So there are certain bacteria or certain microbes that can create components, certain components like PHA. Uh, I forgot about the name of it, but PHA is one of the components used to make uh, plastic, biodegradable plastics, right? Uh, and uh, that is how the biodegradable biodegradable plastics can be created, right? Okay, and can replace uh, the synthetic plastics. Yeah, so it's from the, the use of microorganisms to uh, produce those components. And then, yeah, biodegradable plastics. Okay. So these are some of the examples. There are actually more. Uh, more in the past and more uh, coming up. So it, there is no end point for it because pollution is a never ending issue. It's a, even the environmental problems. There are so many environmental problems. So it's still happening. So more and more solutions are needed from time to time. Yeah? So this is not just limited to this. Okay, so that's it for today's lecture. So we have covered um, pollutions in general. Yeah, and then we focus on two major pollutions, uh, air pollution and water pollutions. And most importantly, we also discuss uh, the roles of biotech in reducing uh, pollutions, air pollution and water pollution. Yeah. Right. That is actually the most important part because when you talk about environment, environment is there, pollution is there, but what is our role? What is the role of biotech in uh, overcoming those issues. In biotech, the, the underlying principle of biotech is to solve problems, that's big. This is an applied science. Yeah, so perhaps we can relate uh, now uh, the environment and also the, the roles of biotechnology. So I think